we are going to talk about which screening test should be best used for cervical cancer screening. Uh, we've heard this morning that there, between, uh, from the initial HPV infection in teenagers to cervical cancer, there is a long period of time, um, uh, at least three decades, which leave time to uh, detect precancerous lesion and treat them, which is the aim of cervical cancer screening. Screening actually resulted in decrease in incidence and mortality. And we know now that women in the age between 25 and 65 are the people, the women have that may benefit the best from the most for screening. So what is the background for cytology or HPV? Cytology is called PAP test. It checks whether there are abnormal cells in the cervix. There are two types of cytology test. One is the conventional on slide, and the second is liquid-based cytology. HPV test, it checks for HPV infection. There are actually many types of HPV tests. And when the test is positive, it just means that there is an HPV. Then there is a need, as we heard before, for triage, mainly with cytology, to identify women with a lesion. In case a lesion is detected, of course, the lesion will have to be uh, uh, confirmed with cytology and biopsy and treated if appropriate. So first, look at cytology test. The sample is collected with a spatula, then uh, fixed on a slide or washed in a vial. Here you can see uh, the conventional smear compared to the liquid-based cytology. As you can see, liquid-based cytology gives an uh, easier way for the reviewer to look at the slide and to give a diagnosis. I must say that the, uh, the, the, the reviewer must be trained uh, to look at slides, otherwise it's no help with the cytology. But liquid-based cytology does not increase the detection of precancerous lesion. Anyway, it can be used for HPV tests. No, HP tests. HP tests, a sample can be collected by the provider or, and it's very important, by the woman herself. It is then stored in a vial with appropriate preservative and then test, most of the tests now requires lab support. The interesting things with HPV tests is that you got an objective result. There is or there is no HPV. There is a potential for self-sampling, but there are potential difficulties in supplying storage or transport of the material. What is, if there is any, the benefit of HPV test compared to PAP test? Actually, HPV test provides a 60 to 70 greater protection against invasive cancer compared with cytology. For every 1,000 women screened, around 20 <coughs> will have precancerous change. When you do the pap tests on these women, you will correctly identify 12 of them and miss Eight. When you do the HPV test, you will correctly identify 16 of them and miss only four. This is because sensitivity of a single PAP test is only slightly over 50%, whereas for a single HPV test, the sensitivity is approximately at 
95%. Other benefits of HPV tests are that it requires less frequent screening because there is a lower false negative rate, 3% versus 30%, and as we have seen in slides before, a woman with, who tastes HPV negative is at very low risk to have a precancerous lesion in less than three to five years. Also, HPV tests significantly reduce incidence of adenocarcinoma, who are due to HPV 16, um, mostly in the endocervix, which might not be uh, found when you do a site cervical uh, cytology uh, screening. And finally, <laughs> HPV tests give the opportunity for self collection, which is so important in under-screened populations. Then you have to decide which test you would use. You can, of course, use the, the, the hybrid capture 2 test, which just detects oncogenic, the 13 oncogenic genotypes, and say, yes, there is, or no, there is no. But as we've seen in slides before, women with HPV 16 or 18 are at higher risk of having a preconceived lesion in the future compared to women with other oncogenic genotypes. So if you use a test allowing partial genotyping, it will help to uh, make a risk stratification in the screening program and make triage easier for these HPV positive women. What are the different protocols for cervical cancer screening? When to start? If you use the pap test, everybody agrees now that you should start at 25 years of age, but we may discuss it later, uh, because cervical cancer is very rare in women younger than 25. HPV test is not recommended be before 25 because at this age, all women are infected with HPV. It's just uh, because they are sexually active and it, is, it doesn't mean that they are going to have HPV infection. We do not have uh, cervical cancer. All of us have been infected and we do not have cervical cancer. So prefer 30, 35 years of age. When to stop? Pap test and HPV test can be stopped at 65 years of age if no lesion has been detected during age 25, 65. You have to consider screen with specific program for immunocompromised women, transplant recipient, HIV infected women, if there is a history of precancer, and we'll discuss it in the next future for women who have received HPV vaccine. Which screening interval? This slide shows you that in W uh, women in UK aged from 20 to 64 years of age, yearly screening provides a, a protection higher than 90 percent against uh, cervical cancer, almost similar to screening yearly, but of course at a lower cost. So I think that everybody agrees now that three-year interval for, for cytology uh, is, a, uh, is a screening interval that should be considered. HPV tests, as I said before, should be performed at three to five yearly intervals. What are the benefits of self-sampling? It has been shown that it is similar to clinician sampling for detection of precancerous lesion. And now it's accepted that it can be used as a primary screening methods in nationwide screening programs. It could greatly reduce the workload of clinicians doing cervical screening, which is very important. It also reduces the cost of screening. And finally, 
It lowers barriers to screening when low or moderate screening coverage is attended because women are scared or do not know that they have to be, what are the benefits for them to be screened. Finally, screening might not be enough to prevent cervical cancer, which is our final aim. You can see on this slide that after 20 years of organized screening in the UK, incidence decreased by 24% in a population where there was a 70% screening update. And that now, oh, sorry, oh. and maybe you can't see it, and that during the last 15 years, there is a plateau, meaning that screening alone doesn't help to stop new cases. And this shows that we need now to introduce vaccination to really get rid of the cancer in our population. So, and it is going to be my last slide, screening allows in cervical cancer cases and mortality. Screening using HPV test can be start at women older than 30, performed at three to five years interval. It will allow detection of more precancerous lesion than cytology. It, if you use self-sampling, it works very well and it will reduce the workload for clinicians, which is very important. But for, for HPV test, we need to find adapted triage procedures. You can use cytology if it's well developed in the country when you apply for uh, cervical cancer screening. And finally, prevention of cervical cancer need to add vaccination. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hurd, for a very didactical presentation, fantastically well structured. We have a question from the floor there, please. If you can use the microphone, that would be helpful. Um, hello, thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. And can you please um, tell in details a little bit what is the uh, algorithm uh, is used in France for screening program? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I don't like your question, because, uh, yes, I'm French, but I'm not proud of our screening program, very bad. Still not organized, and it will still be organized in the near future, but we, we, we say that for at least five years, and it will be cytology. We expect to move to HPV tests in five years, or maybe 10 years. So and I'm not sure it's very interesting to discuss this matter. I'm sorry. Mark Carbin, please. Oh. Um, a remark on HPV testing on self samples. Important is to use a validated PCR-based test. Hybrid capture is uh, still uh, very often used. It is not good on self samples. And this comes to the fact that HPV in the vaginal environment has a lower load. And with the PCR, you can compensate for that because you amplify the number of, of copies uh, in your sample. And this is really needed to reach the same sensitivity uh, if you use self sampling. Thank you, Mark, for your comment. Thank you, Mark, for this comment. And you are really the worldwide specialist in this field. So it's very good to have you around. So if people have questions in on that sense for self sampling, I think Mark is a very good person to answer. Are there all, any other questions for Isabel Hurd? Yes, Almon. I have one, actually, not only for Isabel, but for all the speakers. I would like 
to know particularly for all of you, what do you think about the cervical cancer elimination initiative and how you, do you see that uh, being implemented or being addressed uh, in Russia, in France, or well, in Finland, we already heard what is going to happen. I mean, what will be the plan? But I mean, for countries like France, where there is no screening program yet, and vaccination is not going that well either. And sorry to say that. And for Russia, where the situation is really critical, I have to say, because we've seen that the cervical cancer rates are increasing instead of decreasing, like it's happening most in most other countries in Europe and, and middle-income countries. No, I think it's to the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, the, uh, well, I will speak English because the question was in English. I think this is a very crucial, very important question. Uh, uh, well, we pretend in Russia that we have a screening, but it is a sort of uh, opportunistic in the bad opportunistic screening, I mean, not quality control. We heard a lot that screening needs at all stages, we know that, quality assurance, which doesn't exist in Russian screening program. Therefore, yeah, first of all, uh, that, that's what I, uh, the first point. Another point is that we have cytology, uh, cytology screening, it was very successful some 20, 30 years ago because we had a, uh, a good cytologist, trained cytologist. Uh, now we really face a problem because cytological screening, we can't, uh, um, we can't do it because the number of cytologists have declined that dras drastically in the country. So uh, our choice, I think, in Russia is HPV testing in, uh, in screening program. But the main issue is quality control. It's by population based uh, screening, uh, screening based on WHO and International Agency for Research on Cancer recommendations. That's, I think, what we need. I mean, that's clear. I mean, I don't, th I don't have any doubts that, that that we have to go this way because I know I'm a pathologist myself by education I, and I know the situation with cytology. I mean, with cytology and the, we, the coverage of screening is tiny. First of all, we don't know what is a coverage, but the impression is that it is tiny. Thank you. In your, uh, I see one hand rising here. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, not, the, not only question of uh, Maribel, but maybe a few words. I mean, just when you ask it, it is a very important chance for all countries because uh, the strategy is simple: two dose vaccination and two times HPV DNA screening. So you can get this plan as a minimum for all countries, and I, it is achievable. It, it, it's not a problem, it's not an economical problem, just two dose vaccines. And I know WHO is working to lower the cost of the vaccine and lower the cost of the HPV companies, especially with the new Valjan criteria, more companies are validated. So the future is in WHO elimination program. And just two comments, small comments. Uh, about a few months ago, the first oropharyngeal carcinoma uh, data is being published as a poster and vaccine companies will increase their license from FTA. In addition to cervix, they will also have oropharyngeal carcinoma prevention approval. And last question to IARC. Do you have any study on uh, HPV-16 genetic variants? We know that HPV-16 is not the same in all ladies. We have class A, B, C, D. Not all 16 are so uh, wild, some are silent and not cause cancer. Especially HPV 16 type D seems to be very aggressive. I know that you have you are finding new HPV DNAs, but there is also some uh, with the next generation uh, next generation sequencing HPV 16 and others are also divided. Doctor Herrero, do you want to answer this one, please? Yeah, I would say that there have been many studies of variants, and we know that some variants of HPV-16 are more carcinogenic or induce lesions faster. But, but I mean, this is, in my view, this is like uh, 
trying to, to discriminate to a point that's not necessary. HPV-16 is already highly carcinogenic, extremely carcinogenic. It's better to actually worry about not including so many HPV types, maybe, in the, in the probes, because we are including in the probes many types that are of very low carcinogenicity, and this is affecting the specificity of the programs. And the other reason why I think the variant studies have, come in, mean, have become less popular, let's say, is because the vaccine prevents against all of them. So that, that's, it's not an issue in terms of vaccination, because that was the concern that maybe the vaccine was going to protect against some, but not other HPV-16. But that's not the case, because it prevents 100%, basically, when you're not exposed. So. Ms. Mirlov, you have a final question before coffee break, please. Well, I think that question is an answer to, to what uh, Maribel asked. How do you see the, the, the future and the, regarding the cervical cancer elimination program? And I'm um, thankful to the comment of Professor Zarid. Uh, it's quite sad, but it's the reality. I personally strongly believe in implementation research because I know that in some countries it's very, in some countries it can be that uh, they just adopt a WHO policy recommendation. It's very easy and, and things are flying away, more or less. But in some countries it takes more time and sometimes you need to convince policymakers. And policymakers, uh, they're very often uh, medical doctors, and, and particularly in, this, uh, in Eurasian countries. So they need to see some kind of evidence. And uh, in this case, uh, research implementation research can help a lot. And also it helps a lot before implementing the program because then you really see all those little gaps which can be fixed uh, when you implement the program. So I do like the program, the call for several cancer elimination. I do believe that it's possible to do, but I know it will be not going equally well in all countries. That's thank you. So I would, we would like to close this part of the symposium and thank you very